Now I'm delighted to be joined by Andy Street, the Mayor of the West Midlands, someone who has been elected now two times in what some people would call not the most traditional of conservative areas. And Andy, you opened the conference with the first political speech on that stage. Has this conference gone as you'd expected? So I think there's been two conferences, if I'm honest, Tom. You said that I uh, opened the conference, and I suppose I did that as host. So from a West Midlands perspective, it's gone as I expected, because we've been able to show the government all the progress that's been made here and to say, back us through levelling up, and we will deliver. That's been a very good opportunity from the West Midlands. The other aspect of it, you might call it the national political debate, I accept that's been perhaps a little unexpected, a little bit more challenging, hence why I say two conferences at the same time. But as the host, I'm pleased the way Birmingham has presented itself to the world. It's interesting looking at the context in which this conference is held. It's, it's hard to think of a more challenging set of circumstances, given that this is a new government. It didn't have time, really, to bed itself in. There's been some enormous challenges globally in terms of the energy situation, in terms of the financial situation, interest rates around the world rising. And clearly, this is a government that is finding its feet. When it comes to having a unified party, having the party faithful and indeed uh, senior political figures in the party on the side, has this been a bit of a missed opportunity to unite? So I think you're right to pick out in your question there that actually the very first thing the government did was to respond to the energy crisis and actually has put a lot of cash into the hands of individuals. An average semi-detached householder in this city is worth about £1,100 a year to them. We are utterly united around that. And you're right, there hasn't really been the moment for that to sink in, be understood. You might even say get the political upside from that. And we moved, you might say, too swiftly to then the whole debate about the mini-budget where we've seen a lot of debate. But putting my card very firmly on the table, before the U-turn, I called for it. The 45p, the proposed abolition of that rate, was the wrong policy and it was correct that the government thought again about that. And you know, sometimes the braver thing to do is admit that you've got it wrong and think again. So I am very pleased that they did do that. You've been very consistent in, in standing up for your wing of the party on issues like that. But I, I suppose there is the concern amongst some that this is a, a government that was just elected with a mandate from Conservative Party members, I suppose, not, not the country at large, but members, uh, saying that it wanted to get down that historically high tax burden, the tax burden rising to the highest it was in 70 years. The Prime Minister saying she wanted to reduce that. Um, is there a worry that the Conservative Party is, to some extent on this issue, not able to govern. No, if the Conservative Party is something that's meant to stand for low taxes, it's not able to get it through. Not, a, not at all, Tom. You're confusing two things there, if I may say. The principle, <laughs> the big idea on which Liz Truss won the members' election of a lower tax, higher growth country, that is absolutely robust. It is actually right. The huge reductions in tax were not the 45p piece. The huge reductions in tax were around national insurance that every single worker benefits from. And, of course, also the corporation tax and other mm. business taxes. That idea is still absolutely right. Mm. It was this one piece, and I will call it a political misjudgment, but it is not actually fundamental to the economic plan that has actually consumed the debate. But we get back to selling the big vision of a lower tax, higher growth economy. And that, by the way, is the only way that you can afford the public services that citizens rightly expect.